Hi, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry, from engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please give me a like down below and go and hit the subscribe button to find out when more videos like this are coming. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments on what I can do better. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at another Kurzgesagt video, this one on how to build a Dyson Sphere, the ultimate megastructure. I've actually heard of this thing. It's a, a device that puts a bunch of solar panels around a star and harnesses all of its energy. It's quite a fascinating idea. I wonder if we'll ever build one of those. Let's take a look. Human history is told by the energy we use. At first, we had to use our muscles, then we learned to control fire. We industrialized the world using coal and oil and entered the atomic age when we learned how to split a nucleus. At each step, we increased our energy harvest to a scale never seen before and advanced as a species. Currently, we're slowly transitioning to renew- This is cool. It's like one of those uh, civilization uh, video games. <laughs> <laughs> and if we're lucky, fusion energy will become viable in the future. As humanity... If you haven't seen my video uh, reacting to their video on uh, fusion, I'll uh, put it in the uh, video description. ...progresses further, if we don't destroy ourselves or our habitat, we will likely gain complete control of our planet's resources. At that stage, we'll probably begin to look outwards for new places to expand into. But space is hard, and establishing a serious human presence in the solar system will require ungodly amounts of energy. Luckily, we know where to find it. The sun, the ultimate source of energy. A furnace 100 quintillion times more powerful than our most efficient nuclear reactor. Yes. The sun is an immense amount a massive, massive energy source. Nuclear reactors produce a lot of energy too, but the sun's actually just a really big nuclear reactor that uses fusion. It shines with the energy of a trillion nuclear bombs per second. So how do we get this energy? Not some of it, all of it. If we want to collect the most energy physically possible, we'll have to build the largest, most ambitious structure in the universe, the Dyson Sphere, a megastructure that encompasses a whole star to capture its power output. For an intelligent species, building a Dyson Sphere is a technological leap on a par with the discovery of fire for our ancestors. The transition from a planetary species to an interstellar species. It would usher in an age of exploration and expansion on a scale we can barely imagine. So, what would it look like? A solid shell enveloping the sun is probably not the way to go. With that much energy, we could easily colonize, terraform everything else in the solar system and take us beyond that. <laughs> Large rigid body like that would be vulnerable to impacts, possibly shattering. It would be liable to drift and could crash straight into the sun. A more viable design for a Dyson Sphere might be a Dyson Swarm, an enormous set of orbiting panels that collect the sun's power and beam it elsewhere. Such a swarm would give humanity basically... Solar panel that much closer to the sun relative to the Earth will give you a lot more energy. ...limited energy, but building it won't be easy. The sun is very big, so we need a lot of satellites. If each satellite is a square kilometer, we'd need around 30 quadrillion to surround the sun. Even if they're built as lightly as possible, we need about 100 quintillion tons of material. And then we need the- I did the math on this one. <laughs> ...to actually put the parts together and deliver them to their positions around the sun. On top of all that, we need to have a permanent infrastructure set up in space to start building. Let's assume, for the purposes of this video, that our descendants will take care of that and want to create the megastructure. We can sort the challenges into three main categories. Materials, design, and energy. 
To get the vast amounts of raw materials required for our Dyson Swarm, we'll have to largely disassemble a whole planet. Of the planets available, Mercury is the best candidate. It's the closest to the sun. I like that. It would take a lot of material, but yeah, let's just go ahead and destroy a planet. <laughs> Strip mine it to death. <laughs> Very metal rich. Close to the sun also means less moving stuff around. And Mercury has no atmosphere and only about a third of the surface gravity of Earth, making it comparatively easy to launch material into space. Next, we should consider the design of our swarm. Simpler is better. Conventional solar panels are far too intricate and short-lived. Our satellites need to operate without repairs or intervention for astronomically long times, and they need to be cheap to produce. They're most likely going to be enormous mirrors, which refocus sunlight to central collecting stations like in concentrated solar power on Earth. That would be less efficient than a regular solar panel, but you're that much closer, so it's gonna give you that much more energy, and you're making a lot of them, so even if it was a billionth of a percent efficiency, it'd still provide us an abundance of energy. To build and launch them efficiently, they must be incredibly light, made of little more than polished metal foil bound to some supports. And last, we need the energy to build and launch the swarm itself. Taking apart a planet and launching things into space requires an enormous amount of energy. For example, if we used all the fossil fuels and uranium on Earth, and we were perfectly efficient, we could only launch as much mass as Mount Everest into space. A rather meager accomplishment compared to planetary disassembly. To get the energy needed to build a Dyson Sphere, it's almost as if you're going to need the power output of a Dyson Sphere. Yeah, we can't, We need to work our way up there. It, it, it'd be like the equivalent of cavemen with fire going straight uh, to uh, making uh, nuclear power plants because of all the uh, material that you need to build a proper containment vessel, all the electrical stuff. That, it's about as much of a technology gap between them and us and us and making a Dyson Sphere. But that's okay. There's plenty of sunlight to be had on Mercury, so let's get to work. Humans are expensive to keep alive and are very sensitive to the environment, so we'd want to automate as much as possible. Ideally, we'd have a small crew of controllers who oversee an army of autonomous machines doing the actual work. There are four major pieces of technology required. Solar collectors, miners, refiners, and launch equipment. The solar collectors are going to give I like how they're breaking it down. It's very much like one, a uh, project proposal for a big construction project. Uh, that's kind of a fun way to do that. The energy we need to disassemble the planet. To start, maybe we deploy something like one square kilometer of them, either as mirrors or as traditional solar panels. They'll provide the energy to run our miners, which strip mine the surface of the planet, and our refiners, which ex yep, do it incrementally, and then so have you a little bit of uh, a little bit of Dyson swarm panels, and then they can keep making more and more, and eventually you'll get to a point where there'll be enough that it won't just take care of the mining operation, but it'll be able to take care of the rest of the solar system in terms of energy demand. To valuable elements and fabricate them into our swarm satellites. To get them into space, we need a creative and efficient solution. Rockets are too expensive and difficult to deorbit and reuse. Instead, we'll want to use a sort of railgun, a long electromagnetic track which launches our satellites at high speeds. Our swarm satellite looks like fun slide. <laughs> it will be packed tight for launch, unfurling like an enormous origami once in orbit. From this point, we can take advantage of exponential growth using the energy of the existing parts of the swarm to build more infrastructure on Mercury and launch new panels faster and faster. Each panel provides the energy to build another. Those two work together to build the next two. Four become eight, eight becomes 60. Just what I was saying earlier. <laughs> and so on. Within just about 60 doubling times, the sun would be completely surrounded by solar panels. And this can happen quickly. What's going to happen to people that are still on Earth? With the sun being surrounded and... <laughs> Probably wouldn't be good for them. <laughs> if a square kilometer of solar collectors takes a month to build, we could be done in a decade. If only our infrastructure on the planet's surface can keep up with the quickly growing budget of energy. 
<laughs> Even collecting 1% of the sun's energy is an unbelievable change in our species' energy budget. We could create the infrastructure to beam basically unlimited amounts of energy around the solar system. Looks like they're showing just it going around part of it, keeping enough of the sun that faces the Earth. Okay. For all sorts of projects, colonies on other worlds, terraforming planets, constructing more megastructures, or even traveling to other stars. It could be the start of an interstellar civilization. Based on physics... That would be so cool. Alone, this is not just possible, but easy. It's such a simple process and such a necessary step for any species to expand beyond their home planet that many astronomers think there are probably Dyson spheres already out there in the Milky Way. We haven't spotted any yet, but they could be there. It's far from certain that humanity will ever get to this point. Our attention is too often focused on short-term political gains and conflicts that will not matter in the long run. But if we survive the challenges we've set ourselves, we could potentially become the first species in the universe to create a structure with the scope of a star. If we do it, the only limitation left will be our own imagination. Can you imagine if we just put all of our differences aside and just threw all of our resources to making something like this or other things with like space exploration, energy, uh, medical research? Yeah, be an interesting thought if like the entire world's defense budget got converted into that, if we in, into this, because we just didn't have to worry about that anymore. That would be fascinating. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video. I'll see you next time.